So, uh, let's see. What example did we leave off on yesterday? Was it four? All right. So we're going to be on example number five. All right. So we are going to evaluate uh, the integral of x times let's see what this is. x times radical two x plus one. dx. Now, yesterday we left off on uh, the integral of radical 2x plus 1. That's all it was, right? And today we're kind of adding in this x radical 2x plus 1. Um, I want you guys to, to notice how there are two uh, terms that I could choose, right? Either the x or the 2x plus 1 as my u substitution. But you'll notice that one of them is not a higher power than the other. They both ha actually happen to have the same matching powers. They're both first powers. Okay, so whenever that happens, uh, this little trick has to be done in order to, to give yourself a chance of getting this thing done. So um, whenever uh, you have to choose for something to, to do, let me rewrite this here in terms of, or actually let me keep my, my ink here in blue. Um, I'm going to rewrite this in terms of powers because we prefer uh, to do that in that form. Uh, remember that one of the hints I could give you is I told you yesterday to pick the u substitution for the thing that has the higher power right in our case they match uh, or you let the u substitution be the angle for a trig function right if it's anything more than just like an x um, which in our case we don't have that here here's another hint for you guys you tend to use anything that's either in a denominator or in a radical as your u substitution okay anything inside of a radical or an or a part of a denominator it's not that it always works but they tend to work okay so in my case I'm gonna let u equal to 2x plus 1 okay now if I let u equal to 2x plus 1 then du is just 2 dx right um, so I can see that 2x plus 1, that's a pretty obvious thing. That's right here, right? And then when I look for uh, the dx portion, right, du equal 2 dx, I know that the dx is there. The 2, I can move it out of the way. Actually, let me, let me rewrite this. I'll write it as half du equals dx. So you see that right there, right? So I have matching pieces but there's something that hasn't been matched yet, right? That X, that's by itself. That has no U variable attached to it, okay? So what I have to do, and this is that little trick that I tell you guys, is I notice, okay, well, I did my U substitution, and I did my derivative, and everything seems to be matching okay, but I have this extra variable there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this equation, Okay, and I'm going to solve it for x. Okay, so uh, u equals to 2x plus 1. So let me just write this down here, 2x plus 1. I'm going to make it u minus 1 equals 2x. So x will be u minus 1 over 2. So now I have something for that. Does that make sense? So notice how my x variable is now written in terms of u. Okay, my dx has been solved for, it's half du. My 2x plus 1 will be my variable u. Okay, so let's go and start uh, substituting everything in. Okay, so we're going to let this equal to the integral of, let's see, x is u minus 1 over 2. Now, 2x plus 1 to the half power will just be a u to the half. And my dx portion, that's a half du. Now, I know this doesn't look as easy as the other ones that we were doing before. Okay, the other ones would break down into like a u squared or something, and we'd be uh, doing this pretty easily. But 
In this case, I mean, we just have a little bit more we have to deal with, okay? Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that half in front of the DU and I'm gonna move it out. Okay, so there's your half. And we have our U minus one over two times U to the half DU. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take the half out of this portion, I'll kind of highlight it here for us, but right there, okay, that half in there, I'm gonna move it out. So it's gonna become a one quarter integral of u minus one, u to the half du. And now I'm gonna distribute that u to the half into the u minus one, because that's a product rule right now. Uh, if this was a derivative, I, I need to make it into just a bunch of terms, right? Those terms um, is what's gonna help me to integrate. So let's distribute that u to the half times u minus one in here. So I get uh, one quarter integral of u to the three halves minus u to the half du okay so u to the three halves minus u to the halves du now at this point you guys should be able to do this um, you just got to do your basic power rule for integration right so you're going to add one to the power divide by the new power so let's let's write that out this is one fourth times u to the three i'm sorry not three halves u to the five halves, right? Because three halves plus one is five halves, divided by five halves, minus u to the three halves, divided by three halves, plus c. Now remember, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, so we get uh, one fourth, that's two, u to the five halves over five minus two u to the three halves over three plus c now i'm going to go ahead and distribute that one quarter you'll notice they both have a two on top of the denominator so it's going to reduce that one quarter to a half so i end up with u to the five halves over 10 minus u to the 3 halves over 6 plus c. Okay, and we just need one more step. All right, we got to go back and change our u into our x function, which was a 2x plus 1. So let's write that out. So be 2x plus 1 to the 5 halves over 10 minus 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves over 6 plus c. And this is going to be our solution uh, for that problem. So we'll kind of revisit this one um, again right now. I'll just give you guys a little bit of time to write this down. Um, but the reason why this one became a little bit more complicated was because of the fact that after I did my U substitution and I picked the best option and I did my derivative, um, I noticed that there was still a piece missing. Okay, And if there's a piece missing, then I kind of have to try to figure out what I can do with that piece. So um, given that situation when uh, I, have to, I have to try to figure out what to fill in, um, I got to look at my, my original U substitution and maybe use that as a way to solve for my X values or anything else that I may have to. I can use anything that I use in my let statement to help me do the work, okay? So again, you can kind of see, I mean, this was a lot of work for this problem, but you could see how we got everything to match up, just that it took us a little bit more time right here.
okay because we had to figure out like how am i going to substitute for x like there's no way for me to substitute for x according to my u substitution and derivative well then i can do it myself by solving for x based on the u substitution and this can be done at any time okay not just in this situation in any situation if you ever need something like that um, so be it let's say it was an x squared instead okay so if you if you pretend that this was an x squared then that's still fine you solve for x and then you just square your result does that make sense so if it was an x squared you still solve for x and square you can manipulate it however you want okay so there's that problem and uh, i think i told you i had three more examples i was wrong it was only two the reason why i thought it was three is because this example is very long so i looked at the work and i'm like oh that must be two but no, it, it's just one. So uh, a long example. Any questions on this one? Uh-huh. Um, oh, the u to the power of 5 halves comes from this piece. Because when you integrate u to the 3 halves, you have to add 1, right? And that's when we get our u to the 5 halves and our 5 halves down here. Same happens with the one half, right? One plus one half is three halves, or one and a half if you want to call it that. Any other questions? Notice we only, when we integrate, we only use one basic trick, right? Power rule. That's all we do. We add one, divide by the new uh, power. And now we're learning, like, okay, we still use that power rule like we've been doing, but the only difference is that now we may have to substitute for something first. So here we go. Let me give you um, one more example here. I'm a little scared of what I'm about to do. This is not supposed to have defined intervals. I'm about to put them in. And unfortunately, in calculus, sometimes when you make up a problem without testing it first, bad things happen. So I'm going to take a, a ride on the wild side here. We're going to put from 0 to pi over 3. Actually, no, that would be, would that be a good idea? Let's go to pi over 6 instead pi over 6 because pi over 3 is just going to be the same as 0 so we'll do pi over 6 so from 0 to pi over 6 so again this is called a definite integral that means we definitely know the interval where we're integrating right from 0 to pi over 6 um, remember you can always do this on your calculators just punch it in and, and do that um, but um, in our case you know we're going to just do it by hand so and we're going to write down those hints a little later, but we've done, we talked about the hints, right? Um, where you pick the thing with the highest power, right? Um, or maybe you pick the thing inside of a radical or in a denominator, or if it's a trig function, you pick the angle, if there's anything in there with, uh, with something more than just an X. So you can see right here, we have a three X. So based on those hints, you would look at this and say, okay, well, the angle has something more than just an X. Now, by the way, don't write this down right now, okay? I want you guys to see what happens. If we follow one of those hints I gave you, okay, then you would let U equal to 3X. And DU would be 3DX, which means that one-third DU is DX, okay? Now, you can see the 3x there, right? You can see them right there. Um, and you can tell that there's a dx here and there. But um, if I change it, if I, if I do exactly what I did right now, again, you're not writing this down because this is not correct, okay? This is what I end up with. One-third integral sine squared u cosine u du. Now, if you're wondering where do the upper and lower bounds go, they disappear once you do a substitution, but they'll come back later. But look at the result that I get. Did it really make it that much easier to do? 
No, I just lost my angle, right? But I still have a, fu a, a trig function squared and then another trig function, and I have no way to get rid of them. Okay, so even though the hint I told you was correct, okay, I, I did want you to do that. Um, it may not always work. I told you it works a lot of times, but it doesn't always work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another hint that you can use. Okay, so let me uh, delete that really quick. So here's the fourth hint I can tell you. And again, I'll write this stuff down after and I'll put it in your notes. If you see two trig functions, okay, and um, if you remember the very beginning of the lesson from yesterday, I told you look to see if there's something there that if you take a derivative of it, it'll give you something else in that problem. Well, if I take a derivative of sine, what do I get? Cosine. And I do have a cosine there, and I do have a sine there. Sure, it's a sine squared, but remember what I told you, don't worry about the power so much. Sometimes you do, but rarely you have to worry about it. So, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and start. What if I let u equal to sine of 3x? Well, that means that my derivative would be cosine of 3x, right? Because you take a derivative of sine, it's cosine of the angle. And then you multiply it by the derivative of the angle. What's the derivative of my angle? 3. And then dx. Now, I don't have an extra 3 there, so I'm going to divide it out. 1 third du is equal to cosine of 3x dx. And check this out. Sine of 3x sine of 3x, cosine of 3x dx, cosine of 3x dx. The only thing I didn't substitute for was the power of 2, but that's never been a problem because we know how to integrate powers, right? We just add 1, right? So check out what happens to this whole problem. It becomes one third integral of um, we have a du here, right? One third du. That that takes care of the cosine three x dx, and then the sine of three x squared becomes u squared. Now remember what I told you. When you do u substitution, if you have definite integrals, in other words, upper and lower bounds, um, you have a choice. You could either uh, plug them in and try to figure out the new bounds. Most people don't like doing that. Okay. Or you can ignore them for now, and then once we plug everything back in, all our values, then we actually use them. Um, the easiest thing that I've noticed people prefer is the second method, which is the one I'm going to teach you, okay? Um, so this is the second method. You're going to do the work and just ignore the upper and lower bounds. The 0 to pi over 6, we're going to ignore it. But we're just going to pretend that this was an indefinite problem. This becomes u to the third over 3 plus c. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two steps. I'm going to distribute, well, I won't do two steps. Let's go ahead and distribute this in. u to the third over 9 plus c. That's where I'm at right now. Okay, I have to substitute back in and I'm going to plug in my upper and lower bounds, meaning... I'm going to substitute back in sine of 3x cubed over 9. And I'm going to put it from 0 to pi over 6. Now, again, I don't know what the answer is to this because in this example that I did for you guys, I didn't have limits. But I just figured, hey, let's do one with limits so we can see it again. Okay. So I may need some of you guys uh, with this if the numbers come out really weird. I'm hoping they, they didn't. So, fundamental theorem of calculus says, if you do your integral and you have upper and lower bounds, first you plug in your upper bound. So sine cubed of 3 times pi over 6 over 9. And then you subtract 
plugging in your lower bound. So sine cubed of 3 times 0 over 9. And this should be our answer once we simplify it. Well, let's see. 3 times pi over 6, that's a pi over 2. So sine cubed of pi over 2 over 9 minus sine cubed of 0 over 9. All right, what's sine of pi over 2? It's 1, right? And 1 to the third, I'll write it down here, 1 to the third over 9. And then what's sine of 0? So that's 0 to the third over 9. So my answer should be 1, 9. So that's my definite integral. Okay. So I told you that there were two methods, but before I go into that, any questions on the plugging in and, and working through it? Remember, this is using the fundamental theorem of calculus, which we talked about in 4.3 and 4.4. Okay, so now in 4.5, uh, ending off the chapter. Notice we can't forget our tree. you got to remember your tree. So I told you guys um, about this, about this information here, how it disappears, but then it comes back. Okay. That's the way I was taught to do it. I've seen other people teach it different way, a different way, and I'm going to show it to you guys right now. Okay. But um, you can choose whichever one you'd like. Okay. It's completely up to you. Let me show you what it looks like. Method number one. So method one, method two. I, I like method two, which is ignore your upper and lower bounds, do your integration. Then once you plug everything back in, then bring back your upper and lower bounds. The reason why I like this method is because I don't have to worry about manipulating my upper and lower bounds. It's going to be zero and pi over six no matter what. Okay. The other method looks like this. So let me show you. So I'll do it in purple here. If I wanted to manipulate my pi over 6 and my 0, what I would do is I would get this equation. So u equal to sine of 3x. And I'm going to plug in my upper and lower bounds. So check it out. Here's my upper bound. u equals to sine of 3 times pi over 6. So u is equal to sine of pi over 2 so that means u is equal to 1 okay and then I would do it for the 0 u is equal to sine of 3 times 0 so u is equal to sine of 0 so u is 0 and what you would do at this point right here it would look like this one-third integral from 0 to 1 of u squared du. Notice how instead of 0 to pi over 6, I put 0 to 1. Now let me just do the work so you can see it. And then I'll tell you why I don't like it. Because after I'm done, you're going to say, Mr. V, that actually looks easier. Right? But I'll tell you why I don't like it. But I want to show it to you guys so you can see if you like it. One third, this is u to the third over three from zero to one. Notice I didn't put plus c because I actually have my upper and lower bounds. Now I plug in my one and my zero. So that's one third minus zero over three. So my answer is one ninth. Let me zoom out. So why do I say that I prefer the second one, which looks like I did a whole bunch of 